Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another evening of Points in the Paint. My name is Sam Odayemi, and I will be covering all things NBA. Um, and yeah, it's good to be back. All right, so I want to catch you up on a few things. i um, got a, a nice little rundown plan for tonight. Um, I think I'm going to start off first talking about the NBA Cup, um, the in-season NBA tournament. I know I touched on that a bit last week. Um, and again, it's a four-game in-season NBA tournament. Um, between all the teams, um, the winners of the teams, I think the players just get cash. It doesn't have any effect on the standings or playoffs or anything like that uh, whatsoever. Um, there are three different groups, group A, B, and C, and that's for each conference. So there's three groups in the East, three groups in the West. Um, and then each group has five teams, 15 teams from East and West. Um, and that makes up the brackets. Each team plays the other teams in their brackets one time, so four t- four games, and then the winners of those pools advance to a knockout stage. And again, the winners of those, uh, the winners of that tournament just gets cash, and it gives I think a young players an opportunity to shine and kind of showcase themselves. Um, and that's what the NBA is stating, and that kind of makes sense because I think the Spurs, um, all their games have been televised when it comes to the tournament games, and it just gives a young opportunity for young players to kind of put their names out there and show what they're about. I mean, not everybody knows. um, Everybody knows about Victor Ramiyama, but everybody might not know about um, the third, the 30th pick in the first round or a second round pick who's playing on the team and balling out. So this tournament kind of gives those opportunities to those players. Um, Just looking at the group play today, um, start with the Eastern conference, uh, group A, group B and group C Uh, group A, we have Indiana, um, I'm just going to read this in the order. Um, remember, there's five teams. Indiana's 2-0. and Philadelphia is 2-1. and Cleveland is 1-1. and Atlanta is 1-1. and And Detroit is 0-3. And, and Group B in the Eastern Conference, Milwaukee is 2-0. and Miami is 2-0. and New York is 1-1. and Charlotte is 1-2. and And Washington is 0-3. And Lastly, Group C in the Eastern Conference, Boston, 2-0, and followed by Brooklyn, Two and one, Orlando is one and one, Toronto is zero and one, and Chicago rounding out the group C is zero and two. We jump over to the Western Conference, Group A: Lakers three and zero, Utah Jazz two and one, Phoenix Suns one and one, Portland Trailblazers one and two, Memphis Grizzlies zero and three. Group B in the Western Conference: We have the Pelicans at two and one, Denver Nuggets at two and one, Houston Rockets at one and one. Dallas Mavericks at one and two, and the LA Clippers at one and two. And lastly, Group C in the Western Conference, we have Sacramento at two and zero, Minnesota at two and zero, Golden State at one and one, Oklahoma City Thunder surprise at one and two, and San Antonio Spurs at zero and three. Okay, so we'll have looks like. A couple teams will still play two more games, and a couple other teams will probably play one more game, which, which kind of makes sense. Um, if some teams play three and some teams play two, since there's an uh, odd number of teams in the uh, seedings, um, and the winners of those will advance to the knockout stage. Um, looks like the quarterfinals are set for December 4th and the 5th. Semifinals are December 7th, and the championship is December 9th. So we'll have a couple more tournament games before – uh, it gets down to the quarterfinals. So I think the next show sh- should be wrapped up by the time I do my, my next show. So that'll be, we'll continue to follow along and see what goes there as well. All right. So then switching gears and looking at the NBA regular season, um, what we all want to want to know, um, season's kind of well underway. Um, so if I switch the standings and look at uh, some of the top teams in the East and the West, um, we have our usual suspects um, in the Eastern Conference um, as of tonight. And there are some games going on, obviously. Um, Boston, number one, followed by Philly, Milwaukee, Miami. Orlando's at five. The Knicks are at six. Pacers are seven. Cleveland's eight. Hawks are nine. And Brooklyn are ten. Um, definitely want to just look at the top ten teams now because those are the playoff teams, obviously. Um in your Eastern Conference, you have the usual bottom feeders. I guess I'm kind of surprised that Chicago's in there, but I'm not surprised. But Toronto, Chicago, both those teams are are probably on their way to rebuild. A young Detroit team um, who's still trying to piece it together and then getting back Cade Cunningham this year and their other young other players. 
uh, the Wizards, um, and they're probably the circus team of the NBA to me, um, just because I don't I don't feel like they prioritize winning at all. And the Hornets, um, with the Hornets that I know they dealt with some injuries with uh, Terry Rozier, um, and I believe um, some other players as well. So it will be interesting to see how the Hornets look when they take out because I think the Hornets are good enough to at least be in the play-in game. Um, LaMelo, Terry Rozier, rookie Brandon Miller. Um, I mean, they just got Miles Bridges back, if I'm correct, and he, um, he was a really good piece for them last year. Obviously, he's dealing with some legal issues. won't really get into all that, but um, if he's continuing to produce like how he, how he will produce, um, and once he gets his feet under him, I think Charlotte could probably make a run from one of those playing spots. If not, yeah, definitely one of the top um, seven, eight, or nine, or ten spot, the playing spots, yeah. Not surprised to see Boston, you know, sitting at 11 and 2, Philadelphia, uh, 10 and 3. Um, again, you know, Philadelphia, you know, it's addition by subtraction, getting rid of James Harden. You know, that was probably the best thing for them to get that out of that presence out of the locker room. And you see it now. They're on a, currently on a two game win streak. Um, they're also rumored to be interested in Zach Levine from the Bulls, which I could possibly touch on here in a bit later. Um, but they're looking to only get stronger and get better. Um, and the beautiful thing about that James Harden trade is, yeah, they were able to get free up space for Maxi and um, and B to, to have the ball in their hands more. Um, they got back some veterans, and then they got back some young pieces, but they can turn around and flip those veterans like Nicholas Batoon, Robert Covington, and the Morris twin, one of the Morris twins, and then get back additional players. Um, so Philadelphia – if you're a Philadelphia Sixers fan, you got to be um, feeling pretty good about your team right now. Nick Nurse is a hell of a coach. Um, we saw what he did in Toronto. So I like, you know, what Philadelphia is doing. Milwaukee looks like they've been playing better as well. They're on a four-game win streak. Um, you know, Milwaukee's defense has been kind of questioned until late. Um, they're simply just outscoring teams. They're scoring 120, 119 points per game. Um, so – they have enough firepower offensively. I know they're missing some guys, too. I know Dame's been banged up and other guys have been banged up. So I think Milwaukee will still be the top of the top as long as Giannis is there. Um, I'll be interested to see if Milwaukee makes a move or so or if, or if they or if they target a buyout candidate um, here this season. I don't know. If, I don't think Milwaukee's going to stand pat. I think they really do everything in their power to make sure they get Giannis to stay. So um, that would be interesting to kind of monitor moving forward. Uh, see what the Bucks do. Okay. Miami, you know, Miami started off the season. I can't remember. I think they're like one and four, oh and four. They had a terrible record, but Miami has rebounded. Not surprised. Jimmy Butler lets team. Now they're sitting at the eight and five. Um, Orlando, they have so much young talent. I'm honestly not surprised Orlando's eight and five. They still gotta learn how to close out games, but they're a nice young team on the rise. I think Detroit will be like Orlando in like three or four years, which is still just be 10 deep at two deep at every position with so much young talent that they could just, you know, run teams off the floor if they're talent alone. Um, the Knicks, Knicks, of course, Tom Thibodeau team, they're definitely responding, bounce back eight and five. Julius Randle's probably been playing better. He started off the season kind of slow. Pacers, Tyree Talenburton's team sitting at seven, seven to five. Um, that's good for them. They got some nice young, pe some nice new pieces in Indiana. They got a uh, Obi Toppin and Bruce Brown, so they're trying to incorporate those guys into the lineup. But I like what I've seen from the Pacers so far and the piece they got there. Cleveland, um, my, I'm honestly not sold on Cleveland yet. I know they got Donovan Mitchell and they got uh, Darius Garland and they got some other pieces in the offseason. Was it Max Struess and this and that? But and they still have Evan Mobley, and they still have Jared Allen. But I'm only time will tell with Cleveland. We'll see how this Cleveland team does all year. They're sitting at seven and six. Um, they won three in a row, actually, so they were actually four and six. So that's good for them. Um, but we'll see. I, I'm still I'm, the jury's out on that Cleveland team. And the same thing with Atlanta, just because I don't know if Trey Young and Dejounte Murray are the best fit. Um, and I'm not sure if they have anything else really besides them, besides some bigs. I know they have DeAndre Hunter too. So. Um, we'll see how what happens with Cleveland and Atlanta. Brooklyn, I do like the Brooklyn team. I've watched a few of their games. They got a lot of um, length, a lot of uh, wing players. Nick Claxton down low. Cam Thomas off the bench, who's a who's dynamite, comes off the bench and probably give you like 23 points. They did lose Ben Simmons. He's got some uh, nerve issues in his back. Um, and then I think it's affecting his hip. 
So it'll be kind of interesting to see how that uh, impacts them move, moving forward. Um, and I was kind of hoping Ben Simmons would have a bounce back year. And he, and he was. He was playing good. And I, I watched – I followed some of their games up until that injury. So hopefully um, he can get back on the court. All right, so let's look at the Western Conference now. Ooh, this is a surprise. Um, so as of tonight, uh, Minnesota. <laughs> yeah, Minnesota, the Timberwolves. Yeah, they are number one in the West. When's the last time you heard that? Probably like 2003, 2004 season when they had Kevin Garnett, Sam Cassell, and Latrell Sprewell. I think it's the only time Minnesota's ever even been in the top of the conference. Um, I could be wrong, and if I am wrong, please correct me. <laughs> Uh, but Minnesota's nine and three. Uh, Oklahoma City is ten and four. Denver is nine and four. S- Sacramento's number four at eight and four. Dallas is number five at nine and five. Lakers, oh, Lakers are eight and six. Uh, Houston's six and five. Phoenix is seven and six. New Orleans is six and seven. And the Warriors are six and eight. And they're rounding out, and those are the top 10 teams in the West. So if the season ended today, those teams would be playing in the playoffs and playing games respectfully. Um, the Clippers, Jazz, Grizzlies, Trailblazers, and Spurs are all on the outside looking in. Um, we obviously know the Clippers traded for James Harden. Um, and I believe that was, uh, I want to say, like right after my show, my last show or right before but they just traded for James Harden, so they're still trying to incorporate him into the lineup. Um, so we'll see what happens. So I don't know if the Clippers – and the Clippers have been in the playoffs, I believe, every year since Paul George and Kawhi came together. So I can't imagine a scenario where they're not in the playoffs. I believe they can still eke in the play-in game, so they'll see um, who that will put out. I'm not sure. Um, Phoenix has been dealing with injuries, and we kind of knew that to their big three. Bradley Beal is out, and I can touch on that a little bit later. Um, but Phoenix is 7-6. to six. Um, the Warriors have been kind of struggling. The Warriors are actually on a six-game losing streak. And I know Curry's missed a few games with his knee. Draymond's been suspended um, and, you know, dealing with all that. Wiggins hasn't been playing at his normal – at his at how he normally plays. Um, so Golden State, I, I believe they have enough moxie to still – make a playoff push, but we'll see. There's some hungry young teams in the West. Um, that Houston Rockets team, they're hungry. They're young. They got talent. You know, Shingoon and Jalen Green, uh, Dylan Brooks and Fred Van Fleet add veteran leadership. Um, Jabari Smith, um, the top, one of the Thompson twins. I think it's Amen Thompson. I could be wrong. It's either Amen or Asur, obviously. It's one of the other. <laughs> one of the Thompson twins. I met a nice young, hungry team. Um, Sacramento, we know what Sacramento did last year and they're starting to pick up. Sacramento's actually on a six game win streak. Surprise, surprise. So, um, Sacramento, I think is, you know, I, I knew Sacramento would, I was, I was hoping Sacramento wasn't just a one year wonder. And I know they started off the season kind of bad, but it looks like they're kind of picking it up. And I love that backcourt of, uh, De'Aaron Fox and Malik Monk, um, um, just in Kentucky boys. And yeah, so Sacramento and, and Sabonis down low, you know, they're a load, um, uh, Keegan Murray, um, some of those other pieces, Kevin Hoyter, um, if they have him uh, as well, um, provide a perimeter perimeter play. So I like the Sacramento team. Dallas, Luka's just been special, um, and I'm not surprised there. Kyrie, you know, Luka and Kyrie are a great duo. Tim Hardaway Jr. and their other pieces. Uh, Derek Lively, the rookies, making plays. Um, and they're well coached. You know, Jason Kidd's their coach, so they're well coached. Um, Lakers, the same. The Lakers actually – move Cam Reddish to the starting lineup, and that's helped their defense. And they move Austin Reeves to the bench. So that's um, definitely been a win-win for them on both sides. Um, so I'm not surprised they have a nice little streak. And I think LeBron should score at 37 points last night versus the Rockets. He scored 37 points last night versus Dylan Brooks. Let's just keep, keep it real. Uh, and so LeBron's still trying to remind us that he's still one of the top-tier players. Um, the thing with the Lakers is they rely so much on LeBron – and AD is so hot and cold, I don't know if they will be able to sustain that. Either AD – and AD is never going to be that guy. I, I saw um, a little segment by Rachel Nichols last week, and that is true. We could say that in life, you are who you are, or, you know, it is what it is in a sense. And AD is just – you know, he's never – you know, he had some dominant moments in New Orleans. 
but he's not going to be that guy that can give you 20 and 10, I think, on a consistent night. Some nights he might give you 15 and 15. Other nights he might give you 20 and 10. He's never going to consistently give you that, I think. Um, so for the Lakers, you're going to probably want to look for somebody else to kind of step up and help trying to offset that, that scoring burden off LeBron because you don't want you don't want to see LeBron scoring 30 seven points in a November game when, you know, honestly, I would put LeBron on ice till March <laughs> and be like, all right, you know, it's the middle of March. Now you can, you can come play, get, take the one month to get your legs under you, but we need you for the playoff push. Cause if you're the Lakers, you want to keep Braun fresh for the playoff push. You don't want him playing too many minutes. You already want to keep his minutes down. So he shouldn't, he shouldn't have to score 37 points versus the Rockets team. Um, and just to win by a couple of points, um, you need other guys to step up. A- AD is just not um, going to do that for you. So you maybe want to look at guys like D'Angelo Russell, give you a little bit more scoring. Uh, guys like um, Cam Reddish, who has been giving you more scoring in the uh, in playing um, playing as a starter now, and just um, yeah, try to you know get a community approach. I think the Lakers are really really missing Dennis Schroeder though. Um, he was a really big piece for them, and that's kind of underrated. So, all right. So yeah, so I I previously mentioned uh, James Harden, um, and obviously he's on a clip. He's on the Clippers now. Um, the Clippers are currently, let's see, four and seven. Um, their next game is tonight at San Antonio. So, um, so. I would say the Clippers, I know they were struggling before. They're they're they should be able to win this game. The Spurs are not even good this year. The Spurs are three and ten. Obviously, when Biyama special uh, and that'll be fun to watch. But I still think the Spurs have enough. Um or I'm sorry, I still think the the, the Clippers, even with all their problems and their and their um chemistry issues, I still think they have enough to beat the Spurs. Um actually Russell Westbrook um actually asked the coaching staff to um to, they to ask coach staff to, to um to put him on the bench now. So now Westbrook is coming off the bench. Terrence Mann is not starting in place of Westbrook. So now you're looking at a starting lineup of James Harden, Terrence Mann, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, and, and Zubak. Um, a lot of guys, especially George and Leonard and Terrence Mann, you know, who are all capable defenders and 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 can switch. So that helps. Um, James Harden has never really been known as a defender. So I won't throw him in there. Um, and teams will probably attack him defensively. But if you have guys that can switch, you can kind of mask those issues defensively, especially when it comes to James Harden. Um, and then bringing Westbrook off the bench um, gives him firepower, gives him energy, and gives him pump. Um, I ain't gonna lie, I feel bad for Westbrook, you know, in that situation. But he, I mean, he asked to come off the bench. So that just shows selflessness by him. But he was. He's balling out in the Clippers, balling out the starters, and he was happy in this net. And, and honestly, and I'll say this again: the Clippers did not need James Harden. That's probably one of those trades. If you can go back um, in hindsight, maybe you don't pull, maybe you don't um, make that trade, and maybe you just roll with the guys you got. Beat the Clippers were, were stacked, and they had the, they had, they also had other you know wing players before all this happened, before that trade happened. So I, again. It was a trade that that didn't they did not need, um, but let's give it more time. Let's you know let's let's marinate you know on what what's going on now. Um, like again, they're four and seven. That's twelve games. Let's give them another ten more games. Let's see how they look at the end of December or so because they could possibly still flip James Harden. I believe so. They had to wait like sixty days to trade a player, but they could possibly still flip James Harden's contract at the deadline if it doesn't work for an expiring for expiring contracts and then just wash your hands with this. And especially if it gets too bad, but um, only time will tell. Um, that's just a GM and me talking. So <laughs> don't, don't worry about that. I'm not advocating for anybody to get traded. All right. Some notable injuries. Um, Bradley Beal from the Phoenix Suns. He's out at least the next three weeks. With this back, and that's what I kind of touched on a little bit earlier, is um, it's going to be hard for this to really get a good look at this Phoenix team if these if the stars Bradley Beal, Devin Booker are out with injuries. Kevin Durant's been, I think, the only one that's played all the games. He might have maybe he missed a game here or so with injury, but I believe Kevin Durant's played every game this season, and so uh, hopefully we can see can see these uh the big three from phoenix in action and i believe like bradley bill when he first came back in his first game he played the bulls of course and he freaked they they eviscerated us 
I'm not surprised there. Um, I don't think he was projected to play that game. And, of course, he played the, the game he picks to come back or versus us because, I mean, people can score career highs versus us. Joe Blow can come off the street and score a career high versus the Bulls, but the way the Bulls look now. Um, and then the other – Big injury is Marcus Smart from the Grizzlies. He's got a left foot sprain. I believe that's going to keep him out for a while, too. Um, and now I'm looking to, looks like Luke Kennard and Xavier Tillman from the Grizzlies are also out, too. Um, Luke Kennard's out for two weeks with a bone bruise. And it says uh, Xavier Tillman is considered week to week from an injured left knee. Um Marcus Smart's out three to five weeks. So, man, those those injuries are piling up for the Grizzlies. Um, Steven Adams, already their center, he's out for the season. He's at surgery. Um, Brandon Clark, um, a nice promising big man, young big man. He's still recovering from his um, Achilles injury in March. So the Grizzlies are three and ten. Um I mean, Job Morant comes back after five games, but I don't or after 25 games. So he he think he's eligible to return December 19th or so. I think when I read it last, but honestly, I don't know if it'll matter at this point. The Grizzlies have so many injuries. Even if he comes back, they'd have to go on a, a, a hellacious tear to even, you know, be to even be in position, you know, to 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 play in the playoffs. I mean, as I say this right now, Men, Memphis is three and ten. They lost one. We'll see. 13. So, yeah, 12 more games before John Morant's eligible to come out, come back. Um, and we'll see. We'll see what Memphis has. I mean, honestly, if it turns out this season's a wash, then so be it. I mean, you'll get a nice – you'll get a top draft pick and you can add. But, I mean, sitting at 3-10 and 10 now and with the West being the way it is, it's not good. I mean, maybe you – because you the, the Grizzlies would have to jump the Jazz and the Clippers – potentially going to say to even get in the playing game. And I don't know if they have enough that, but you know, you've seen teams going on, on crazy runs and I mean, it's not out of the realm for a team to win like 20 something games. We saw the Miami Heat do it before. Um, and and this Grizzlies team is gritty enough. Um, but yeah, we'll only time will tell how Memphis ultimately finishes up. So I would definitely want to look at, take a look at them again in a couple weeks. I mean, a couple weeks will definitely, but I think it'll be about another, month yeah just about literally um before we can really look at them when john Morant comes back so we'll uh we'll table our exp- expectations for the memphis grizzlies there okay all right so um um a couple of me and some of the other guys and feel free to check out our facebook uh page for frequency sake um we uh did a piece and um you can also um, I'll, I'll post it on my Twitter as well. My handle is below. I marked zero two two zero. Um, but we did a piece on um, on Zach Levine from the Chicago Bulls, and definitely feel free to check that out again on our page. Um, but we uh, all kind of wanted to highlight, or we all speculated a couple of me and some of the other guys on where he would end up because um, we think that might be the next big name player on the move. Um, Zach Levine from Chicago, Demar Derozan from Chicago, and Alex Caruso off play from the, for the Bulls, um, they're all rumored to be on the trading block, and that's just because the Bulls have underperformed this year. Um, my hometown team has just been bad. Personally, I think we need to just do the rebuild, just, you know, you know, call it in. Um, I don't think we're good enough to compete. We're not good enough to – I don't think we're just not good enough to compete with some of these top teams um, in, the, in the NBA. And what sucks about all this is – I think with the healthy Lonzo, we wore because he was, you know, he was perfect for us. He gave us a nice trio with Lonzo and and Demar and Zach, and you know, is you have a point guard, Lonzo, the point guard, pure point guard who who sets guys up. He's 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 tall. He's six six. He can shoot threes, you know, and he's a proof three point shooter, so he can help space the floor. Um, these are things that the Bulls struggle with our three point shooting. Um, and just scoring in the offense was so much more different with the point guard like Lonzo in, in the lineup. And so losing Cam has been something we've never, and that's been what almost two years now because he went down um, two years ago and he missed all last season. He went down, so it's almost it's going on two years this season and he's going to be out for the rest for the rest of this season. Losing Cam was a blow. Like I mean, you can call whatever you want, but that team that was perfect for him. Um, praying for for Lonzo 
to make a full recovery and get back to basketball. Um, I know I mean, y'all think we all have experienced in life something that we love taken away from us. And, you know, you just appreciate it that much more when it's gone from you. Obviously, in his case, basketball, that's his livelihood. That's, you know, that's what he's, he grew up on. Um, he, his, you know, with his brothers, you know, so, and he's only 25, 26, so he's still young enough to still have a productive career. So hopefully he can grow from this. Hopefully he can heal from these injuries and move forward and continue to have a productive career. Um, but with that being said, um, him not being in the lineup, the Bulls have sh- have suffered a lot. They had a nice comeback win versus Miami um, over the weekend when they were down like 22 to one. It was like ridiculous. I was like, I, I, it was so bad. It was just like, I, all you could do is shake your head. They came back and won, but it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. You know, if you're a Bulls fan, I'm looking at the, these numbers now. We're five and nine. Um, our leading scorer, Zach Levine, is just under 22 points per game. Even that's kind of funky to me because I feel like Zach was averaging like 24, 20. These last couple of years, Zach was averaging like upper upwards of 25 plus points per game. So his scoring's down by six points a lot. Um, so I'm kind of, I'm, I'm definitely, I definitely think Zach's gonna get moved. I. I just do. I think he, I mean, it's like every little thing now is kind of magnified. And honestly, you know, you should move Zach. You should move DeMar. You should move Alex Caruso. Um, if you can move Vucevic, you should move these guys to contenders, you know, to teams, you know what I'm saying? Give the young guys on the, on the Bulls an opportunity to thrive. You know, let's see what Kobe White can do. Let's see what, let's really see what Patrick Williams can do because he's been under a microscope too and he has not um, progressed. And the same thing with Kobe as much as you want him to. And man, that just brings me back to another point with the Bulls is our player development department is ass. I, I've been saying this for probably over, oh, almost two years now, but it's just bad. Like you get players that come into your organization, you have to develop them. You have to nurture them. When you have when when children are in school, when when kids are in preschool or in kindergarten, kids are nurtured. You know, they're you have you know. You, and you have to, they're groomed, they're they're educated, you know, all those years. And every year, you know, they're a little a little smarter, a little you know, a little older, a little wiser, a little better. The Bulls players, you know, we get guys. And I mean, if you're, I mean, the Bulls are my hometown team. I can go down the list and look at some guys that we've had who've left Chicago and suddenly just blossom. Bobby Portis, um, what's this guy's name? Miritich, he left. He he blossomed. Um, I can I can I can think of so many more. Not not Tyson Chandler when he left in two thousand six or so, and he went to New Orleans. And him and Chris Paul. I mean, like it's like so many guys find themselves and really except elevate their game once they leave um, Chicago. Lowry Marketing that's playing for the for the for the Jazz. He we he played we we traded for him or we something through Minnesota, and now he's he was an All Star last year. And it's just like when you have these guys, you have to be able to develop them and so your team can grow. And that's why I like some of these other teams like Golden State or the Lakers, you know, or more not so just because of the flash and the allure, but, you know, that you develop your talent. You know, we have good young talent on this Bulls team. I don't care what anybody says. We have good talent, but we have to develop them. That's the key. Kobe White is only 23, 24. Um, Ayo Desumu, 23, um, Patrick Williams, 22, 23. Um, and then we, the rookie we drafted last year, Dalen Terry, and I want to make sure I say his name right. And he and he barely gets playing time, but I think he's been – He's you got to develop him. He's he. These are guys that can contribute to winning, Like you, and you need – and if you don't have that and you're so top-heavy on your, on your starters, I mean, your Zach and DeMar, it's, it's going to hurt. Uh, it's it's gonna hurt your development. So, and I'm I just pulled up Lowry Market and stats because I was curious. This guy is averaging 25 points, nine rebounds, 1.2 assists, shooting 48.7 percent uh, from the field. 25 points is 15th in the league. 8.8 rebounds is 22nd, uh, and uh, 1.2 assists. Would I want to see him average? Could he average more rebounds? I mean, a, a double double. Could he give me twenty four? Yeah, but I mean, he's also he's very perimeter oriented, so that makes sense why his rebounds aren't you know why he's not in double figures. But he's still averaging eight rebounds, um, and he's much improved. And we and we had him. 
2017 and we traded him. He went to Cleveland. And he was like when when he went to when Larry went to Cleveland is when he really found himself. So we had him and we and we just d- did not develop him. And it's just one of the, the the many things the Bulls does that that irks me. And I hope two things. I like Donovan as a coach, but we need to improve our player development, and then we probably need to get rid of some of these these stars and and get draft picks and spine contracts, and then. Um, heck, ride that, ride the youth movements. Let's Kobe White, the Sumu, give them some run. We we bring back Terry from a G League, and, and we play him because he. I think he could be a nice piece for us down down the road. I think he could be a jackknife for us. You know, six eight, uh, forward lefty, uh, perimeter oriented, plays fast. But if you can really develop his skills, he could be a point forward for us where he can make plays. But maybe I'm asking too much. I don't know. All right, that's I'm I'm done talking about the bull. That, <laughs> that that was just my little venting session. Uh but yeah, that's all I have for tonight guys. Uh another 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 great night. Uh thank you for joining me. Um again, feel free to follow us on Facebook. Feel free to follow me on Twitter. Um I do tweet th- things there. Um if you is there something you want if you want to touch on, um please feel free uh to let me know. And hey, if you want to come on and, and chop it up with me sometime, I would love to, and talk sports, talk NBA. Hey, let's let's do it, man. Let's kick the can. You know, um, you can get a hold of me, you know, use my handle there below, um, or whatnot, or just you know, reach out to um to uh our our uh our Facebook page uh, for frequency sake, QC F F uh S Q C. Just search at that Facebook and you should find us for for frequency sake. Yeah. Don't want to butcher that. But yeah, you know, let's uh let's talk shop, you know. Um I I love, you know, to talk NBA. I love to watch it, you know, I just love basketball. And so and I love to share that, you know, with opportunity to other people. Um and yeah. So I guess when we when we touch base when I come back on next, we'll still be having the um, NBA in cup season. So we'll t- we'll look at that again. We'll look at the standings, honest, and I don't know if too much will change between them. Um, if Minnesota's still still uh, number one in two weeks, man, I might have to buy me a T Wolves jersey. Maybe I might have to buy me a uh, who would I buy from T Wolves? Rudy Gobert jersey. <laughs> Uh, maybe get a, yeah. uh, maybe, I don't know, but, uh, if the T-Wolves are still number one, but I mean, they're, they're for real, man. They're for real. And I'm not, I'm not locking them. Um, looking at the roster now, <laughs> uh, Oh, I can get a Luca Garza Jersey. Cause he went to my college, Iowa shout out Luca Garza. Yeah, man, man, I might have to go cop that Luca Garza Jersey. And I haven't bought a Jersey in so long. <laughs> the last NBA Jersey I bought was Derek Rose Jersey in 2010, 2011, um and yeah so yeah this is another edition of points in the paint my name is sam odiemi again my twitter handle is at mark zero two two zeros below feel free to tweet me thank you for joining me this wonderful evening um and stay tuned for more dope nba content have a wonderful evening ladies and gentlemen i'm out